In this video I'm going to show you how you can configure private VLANs but before that let's see what private VLAN is. In this scenario as you can see there is a router, router1 and I'm trying to get to router1 from these servers. Normally these servers should be able to get to router1 but you can see that these servers are from different companies. Although I have put them in the same subnet uh, for different purposes. For example, I am locating these in the same subnet. Uh, I am migrating them. I am, let's say, for example, uh, in shortage of IP addresses. And for different reasons, I, want, I, I might want to put them in the same subnet. What I want to make sure is they cannot talk to each other. Why? Because they are from different companies. I have three companies here, green, red, and blue. They should not be able to talk to each other, which means that the traffic from this port should not be forwarded to other ports. For blue, of course, there is a situation. In this situation, I want to make sure that these two can talk to each other. For example, they are a cl cluster of servers, and this cluster of servers should be able to talk to each other, but they should not be able to talk to other, you know, ports here. But before doing anything, what I'm going to ask you is to click on that subscribe button. Also, there is a bell button there. If you click on that and activate that, anytime that I post a new video, you are going to receive it as soon as possible. Give me a thumbs up too. That's going to encourage me to create more of these kind of videos for you. So first of all, let's see what private VLAN needs. A private VLAN needs a primary VLAN. This is going to be, let's say, for example, VLAN 100. And under primary VLAN, there are some dependent VLANs. These dependent VLANs, for example, 101, can be in different modes. They can be in isolated mode, which means that any port under this VLAN cannot talk to other ports, which means that we are isolating each port from the other ports. They can be in community mode. So a community VLAN has some ports that can talk to each other. Now based on this, I would say that because these ports should be able to talk to each other, they should be in community mode. And because these ports should not be able to talk to each other, they should be in isolated mode. So based on this, I need to create two sub VLANs. This is my primary VLAN. For example, VLAN 100, and the VLAN which I'm going to create for this community one is going to be, let's say, 102. So 102 is going to be in community mode. This one is not going to be here. 101 is going to be in isolated mode. I'm going to assign 101 to this port and this port, which server one, uh, company one and company three servers are connected to. But these two, because they should be able to talk to each other, they are going to be put under 102, which is in community mode. Now, we have two types of ports here. The ports which are assigned to these VLANs can be in two different modes. One of them can be host, one of them can be promiscuous. And because it is a little hard to write, I'm not going to write it. But you know that the host port is going to receive its properties from the VLAN which it's assigned to. For example, if it is assigned to VLAN 102, that's going to be a community port. If it is assigned to 101, that's going to be an isolated port. But what about promiscuous port? Promiscuous port is a port which is basically uh, not under primary or, uh, you know, uh, not under primary VLAN. As a matter of fact, a promiscuous port can talk to anybody. So that is the basic definition of what we have. Now, you know that which port should be in promiscuous mode. This port, as a matter of fact, which connects to the router, should be in promiscuous mode because all the ports need to talk to this and this should be able to talk to all the other ports. So let's just start the configuration. Before this, you need to know that it is a best practice to put a uh, VTP in transparent mode. I have already done that, so if I just show VTP status, you can see that this is in pra transparent mode, as you can see here. So let's clear the screen. I'm going to start with the secondary VLANs or the dependent VLANs, so VLAN 101. 
that's going to be a private VLAN type and as you can see we can have some community or isolated mode for that I'm going to say this is going to be isolated now what I need to do is to have an association but I have not created the major VLAN so what I need to do is to first of all go to VLAN 102 which is going to be a private VLAN type community now let's create the major VLAN or the primary VLAN so I'm going to say VLAN 100 is going to be my primary VLAN and it says that private VLAN type is going to be primary and now that I have created this I should say that 101 and 102 are part of this so what I need to do is to say private VLAN associations and sometimes we can have association in some other platforms you see host associations but here I have association so I have no problem with that now I can just type one or I can type a list of VLANs what I'm going to do is to type a list of VLANs because I have two VLANs here I say 101-102 which means that from 101 to 102 I can say for example from 101 to 110 and then I can remove, let's say, for example, 105. This is one uh, easy thing to do. So let's see what we have here. So show run section VLAN. And it says that I have VLAN 101. Oh, OK, I haven't exited here. And this is why we didn't see that. We have VLAN 101, which is isolated, VLAN 102, which is community, and we have VLAN 100, which has two uh, secondary VLANs or dependent VLANs under them. Now that I have done that, I need to go to different interface com uh, configurations. So here you can see that uh, this interface connecting to router 1 is going to be in promiscuous mode. So I just go to here and of course show CDP neighbor is going to tell me which interface is connected to router 1. Router 1's interfaces are shut down so let's do this first of all. I'm going to say interface E00 no shut and also it should have an IP address of what was the IP address? That's going to be 10111. So 10111. So this is what we have here. And uh, do WR, that's going to be enough. And if I go back to server, it says that there is a duplex mismatch. Also, I should say duplex full so that I have no problem with that. OK. Now that I have done this, and if I go back to server, it says that it always says that Ethernet 00, 00 is connected to that. So I say interface Ethernet 00. 00. The switch port mode is not going to be accessed, it is going to be in private VLAN. So I just say this is a private VLAN type, and it can be a host, which means that it receives all the properties from its. Uh, you know, father VLAN or mother VLAN or whatever. Or it can be promiscuous. In this case, it is going to be promiscuous because all the computer, uh, all the ports should be able to talk to this port. And, and now that I have done this, I need to say which VLANs are going to be mapped to this. So I just say switch port private VLAN. So private VLANs have some mappings here in this case. I'm going to say mapping. And then the mapping is going to be 100 for the primary VLAN. And after that, it says that a list of, you know, uh, secondary VLANs. So that's going to be, let's say, for example, add 101 to 102. So if I show run of interface Ethernet 00, now you can see that what the configuration is here. Now let's say to uh, we need to configure other interfaces and, and make sure that, for example, these two 
R for uh, 102 and these two are for 101 so first of all I need to see the port numbers I know that this is Ethernet 01, Ethernet 02, Ethernet 03 and this one is Ethernet 11 so I just say that interface range Ethernet 01 also Ethernet 11 one zero, of course, I guess. This should be in switch port mode. Uh, of course, it should be private VLAN. And private VLAN type is going to be host in this case. And now that it is in host mode, it should have a host association. So I just say switch port private VLAN host associations. In this case, because these are going to be under 101, which is the isolated one, I just say 100 is for the primary, 101 is for the secondary. What about 02 and 03? So, interface range, Ethernet 10, Ethernet 02 to 3. This is going to be switch port private VLAN and again this is going to be let's say that for example host again because they are going to receive it private VLAN mode is going to be private VLAN switch for mode private VLAN and we have host again here and the associations, of course, is going to be 102. So show run interface Ethernet 01. It says this 02, 03, and 10. So this is the configuration that we have for each one of these ports. Now let's check the reachability from each one of them. I should be able to get to the router, which is possible, of course. C1 server can reach. C21 can reach. C22 can reach. What about each other? C3 uh, is going to ping 10.1.1.101. It is not possible. It says it is unreachable. Uh, 102 should be unreachable. Everything should be unreachable. And 103 should be unreachable, of course. Very good. What about C1 server? Uh, it should be able... C1 server, let's see, what is the IP address for C1 server is 101. So 2, 3, and 4 should not be reachable. So 2 is not reachable, 3 is not reachable, and 4 is not reachable. Okay, so but there's a difference, you can see that, but uh, after all it is not reachable. But C21 should not get to it should get to 111. Uh, what about 101? It is not reachable. 102 is itself, I believe, yes. C21 is 102. 103 should be reachable. And you can see that 103 is reachable, of course, but 104 should not be reachable. So if I just say 104, it should not be reachable. So you see the configuration. And you see the verification, and this is how we create a private VLAN. But after all, let me see the configuration that we have here. Uh, this is the VLAN 100 with the associations of 101, 102. 101 is isolated, 102 is community. And you can see that these are the interface configuration that we have so far.